All right, good morning. So, um, it's another Sunday morning. So, see what's on TV. Dr. David Jeremiah is talking about the two spies, right? And t 12 went into the land, and 10 had a bad report, and only two had a good report, right? Well, that's kind of what seems to happen with Paul and John, right? Paul and John are bringing more truths out than the rest of the disciples, including Matthew and Luke, who was a companion of Paul. Mm -hmm. They also wrote the book of Acts, right? Mm -hmm. Now, you got to realize before that, they only had one source, the Old Testament, right? <laughs> So, you're probably not even halfway teaching the Old Testament right either. Either Now, I'm not saying you're teaching it totally wrong, but there are things in there you got to understand, good and bad, that could have happened to Jesus when he was delivered over to the sinful man, men, including right. Including right. See, he, he was around them from dusk till noon, right? That's six... Or seven hours, depending on when they took him for the crop crew. <laughs> there we go. You got to think about that, too. I know. <laughs> now, it's between March to April, that's all we know for sure, right? When he was taken, right? So it's kind of starting to... Days starting to get a little bit longer, right? Days like that. Uh, mm -hmm. The Passover with... The different calendar falls on different days, and I guess that's okay if you're Jew or Christian, right? The Muslims don't really celebrate the resurrection of Christ, right? Mm -hmm. But if he did resurrect, what would he be to you? I don't know. I know. Well, that's what I'm trying to explain that perhaps Muhammad could not understand, right? About Jesus, right? Now, if he has Gabriel denying what he said to Mary, see, a prophet cannot deny another prophet and be a good prophet, or he's hiding something, right? Now, maybe he's being sarcastic, too, right? You know, that's what he means, right? See, if I say Jesus, that Gabriel says Jesus is not the Son of God, right? when he said he was in the New Testament, right? Then you're changing something, right? Now, the way to say the opposite or be sarcastic about it is to have Gabriel say he was not the Son of God, which is then sarcasm, right? You understand, right? It can also mean <laughs> that you're misinterpreting the prophet's written word Versus his intentions in writing it that way. And uh, you, not the prophet. <laughs> That's why he's the prophet and you're not. And you're not. <laughs> you're trying to follow the prophet. But when it's something written down, okay, you can take something written down out of context. It's easy to do, right? Like I'm explaining with do not me touch not yet, not yet. <laughs> For I have ascended to the Father of me. Right? That was still past tense, right? You understand? <laughs> he has already ascended to the Father of us. And uh, now he's returned to the body, right? He will again ascend in 40 days, in 40 days, right? And again, then you'll all see him ascend into heaven. <laughs> right, right. You get that? Right. Now, he appeared, according to Paul, to 500 people. Mm -hmm. So, again, like with Muhammad saying Gabriel 500 years later would deny Jesus is the Messiah or the Son of God, right? That don't quite make sense, right? <laughs> but what is he doing? Being sarcastic, maybe, you know? 
to show you that if you say Jesus Christ is not the Son of God, you're denying what Gabriel said of him. Now, in the passage, it said, Gabriel says, that holy thing which shall be born to you shall be called the Son of God, right? So, how does Muhammad have him completely saying the opposite 500 years later, right? <laughs> or is he being sarcastic? Be saying that because he already said it 500 years ago, right? See, sometimes a prophet will be sarcastic, openly, right, sarcastic, when he wrote it, right? <laughs> but you're taking it literally now, <laughs> right? Exactly, right? What he means is, did Gabriel lie when he said to Mary he was the Son of God? Or... Is he not the son of God, right? And Gabriel lied to Mary. <laughs> He's trying to get you to question right. the stories, even with Isaac and Ishmael, and ask why. Right? Didn't he offer Ishmael instead of Isaac, right? You understand? <laughs> right. Um, well, explain why in the text. See, both women had a firstborn son with Abraham. Now, but only one was his wife. The other was the slave of the wife, right? Which is a different connotation even among free men and kings and, again, slaves, right? So there's really three caste systems even back then. Or even the rich and the poor in the middle right, class, right? See, we all fall in a class, even in Hinduism, by the way. <laughs> but the problem is we're all human beings, too, right? If you're born to a slave, you're considered slave, right? If you're born to the rich, you're considered rich. If you're born to the poor, you're considered poor. And if you're born to the class... Lower middle class, middle class, and upper middle class, right? Again, you have all this genre, or this agenda, or this type of living, right? People get used to. Well, that's the problem. Sometimes, like in some dog billionaire, <laughs> even a Pauper can become a prince, right? <laughs> but it's not everybody, right? And vice versa. With the Buddha, right? The prince became a pauper, right? To understand suffering in the world, right? What causes us to suffer? Other human beings who don't give a damn, right? You understand, right? Why do the poor die in Africa? Their children don't have food, <laughs> And those who are rich don't supply food to them, right? So they can be okay, right? And not die, and not die. So therefore, their children die of starvation, right? And who's who is that on, right? We all know a child needs something to eat, right? Like James said, right? If your brother be hungry, right? Feed him, right? Even if your enemy be hungry, feed him. Why, right? If... You do so, you're doing a good work. <laughs> and no one can deny that good work. <laughs> no, that's right. It's a good work. <laughs> good is good in the Bible too, and evil is evil. You cannot call good evil or evil good. <laughs> so that's your problem, Christian. Sometimes you become self-righteous in how you're following the rules. Oh, I don't drink. I don't sweat. It's the same thing, right? <laughs> Some people do. What you going to do to them? Kill them? <laughs> condemn them? Right. Then you're condemning yourself for even being around it. Right. Because he tempts you to do it. Like Jesus said. <laughs> if you look upon a woman to lust after her in your heart, you've done committed adultery with her in your heart. Right. See, the thing is, though, where is it still at? Your heart. Right. Now, can you stop it? There? Yeah, yeah. That's where you stop it, right? Though, too. Once you look upon the woman and she's attractive and you're not single but married, right? 
guess what? You got to cut that nip it in the butt. <laughs> like Barney says. <laughs> nip it in the butt. <laughs> I'm doing it different than this one, but. <clears throat> Just nip it in the butt. <laughs> Maybe you don't feel like it this morning. Maybe I ain't heard his voice in a while. <laughs> Thought not. Sorry. Mm. But that's the point. You nip it in the bud. You stop it here. <laughs> Before it reaches past your mind. You, you done, sir. <laughs> you know you're married, right? Now, if a single man, okay... Sees an attractive woman, and he don't know if she's married or not. Is that a sin? No, he desires a wife. Right. He that desires the wife desires a good thing. Now, if you're a gay man, same issue, right? Right. You're looking for another male to be your partner. <laughs> okay. Again, first you gotta find out what though. If that person has the same feelings towards other men that you got, right? <laughs> Now, that's like Kevin Spacey and the bartender, whatever's going on there. <laughs> and the bartender has to be a certain age to work in that job. <laughs> now, certain jobs like masseuse, right? In Georgia, you got to be a certain age to work that job. <laughs> you can't put a 14-year-old or a 15-year-old in that job, right? They're not legally capable of doing it. <laughs> right? Another job is working in the strip club. <laughs> you got to be how old? 18, 18. <laughs> to work in the strip club. <laughs> now, even though Tracy Lords, I heard, was underage when she started her porno career. Smart woman. But when, again, <laughs> it was discovered she was underage, no one can... Buy her pornos anymore. <laughs> Smart lady there, though, right? Because it's considered child pornography now, right? Therefore, you can't buy the videos anymore. <laughs> what a way to stop people from knowing you were and were not in porn, right? <laughs> but guess what? That's kind of the time young ladies want to do that. That's unfortunate, right? In a way, if you wanted to see Tracy Lords in the video, but for her, it's kind of a break, right? I did something stupid in my youth, right? And see, as a Christian, I'm not to judge her for being a porn star, right? Understand? Understand? <laughs> That's a path you could go down, right? If you don't know better, right? And she probably, as an underage child, right, didn't know better, didn't know better. And all you can do is what? Forgive her, right? Move on, move on. Let her move on too, right? She did something where sex was involved, okay. <laughs> you could have too. She was also a single young woman, right? You know what that means, right? She's not married, right? So technically, she's allowed uh, to do the pornos, right? But at the same time, right? You know, you see her in other movies like even Blade Trinity. She was in that. Mm -hmm. um, and again, right, when you hear her name, you know how she got over on them. And if you're a business person, you know she did smart thing there, right? If you don't want to be known as being a porn star. Now, of course, she did a Jonathan, Jonathan Winters movie, I think, right? Wasn't she in that? A couple of those, right? I don't know. But I think she did one porn movie when she turned 18. <laughs> and that's all you can read. <laughs> right. Because <laughs> all the other ones are considered child pornography, right? You can't rent those. You can't even buy them anymore. It's illegal. <laughs> That's a smart thing to do if you want to end that career and go and do something else. <laughs> but did she know or not know? Don't matter. Don't matter. The law protects her from her ignorance of the sin. 
Now, what it don't protect is the men who put her in the porn. <laughs> See, they committed the crime. They exploited a minor <laughs> and did not validate her age, right? They didn't give a fl- <laughs> But guess who would get in trouble? Them, not her. Nor the men who didn't know she was underage and did the videos with her, right? Even if they had sex with her. Why is that? They didn't know. They didn't know, right? Um... But once you do know, right, you become more accountable, right? But like I said, that's why you can't put a 16-year-old in an 18-year-old shop, right? Even here in Georgia, in Georgia. You can't put a 16-year-old in the strip club, right? She got to be 18. You can't get her to work as a waitress in the bar until she's, what, 18, Same with a bartender, like with Kevin Spacey's case, right? The bartender has to be, what, 18? 18. And he has to tell Kevin, if he's working behind the bar, he's 18. Kevin, don't know. (laughs) He's not a mind reader. See, see. But like I said, once you ask somebody and they tell you no, and you keep insisting they're gay... You're gay, you're gay. And you're revealing it that you're also in the closet about it and don't want people to know. You might even have a wife. All right. And being gay. Mm-hmm. Now, Moses just considers that an abomination, right? <laughs> for his day. For his day. <laughs> but Jesus made different points about the law, too, right? That sometimes you can change it depending on how you're really observing it. Now, Moses had mm, a man stoned for just picking up sticks on the Sabbath day, right? But is that rational to do that? No, no. Even that seems somewhat overboard or sarcastic, right? Right. Mm -hmm. He also has a woman that's in the field who did not cry out have to marry the man she had sex with in the field and it's because she didn't cry out. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) What does that mean? (laughs) Because she knew no one would hear her if she did. (laughs) Sometimes you got to go along with it. You don't have a choice. (laughs) You know, they do say the best thing to do if you're being raped is say no once and then you got to go along with it. It's not your choice anymore. I know. The person is going to rape you. Mm-hmm. Now, if you say no, they keep doing it. No, no. That's all you need to say for the Lord to understand you're being raped. Now, I would call on the Lord to help me. <laughs> and if they try to kill me, to raise me from the dead like Jesus, right? Or the Wolverine. <laughs> and he'll be like the Wolverine in a few minutes. <clears throat> under five and under five. <laughs> Or your ring can heal real quick. Like in the movies even, right? In case they try to shoot you. In case they try to shoot you because they know you took karate. You know, right? Again. Okay. But if you know, right? You're the one doing the wrong there. Mm-hmm. If I don't know, I'm going to a place where I expect the girl to be 16, right? See, according to Georgia law for that job. And, uh, that's why I'm showing you what the law says too, right? She also has to be 16. You're trying to break the law yourself for a girl to work in that particular job. Now, can she be an assistant to a technician? Yeah, but that don't mean she does the job. I know. She can give... An, the girls like who are doing the job, the nail polish or the nail polish remover, but because she don't have on the mask, right? And because the job, especially with the nail polish remover, and that's why they want the, the girls to be 16 anyway, is a hazard to the person doing the job. Mm-hmm. Like with smoking cigarettes, you can develop cancer. 
Now, see, they're trying to make everything what? Mm-hmm. Pre-existing. Well, if I were to get smaller, mm-hmm. because I fell three stories, right? Is my weight gain, which is what's causing the heart, suggestive heart failure, in oh, nine, I think, right? Well, what caused that mm-hmm. was I was gaining weight. Mm-hmm. And no matter how hard I worked out, mm-hmm, I couldn't lose the weight because I couldn't work out to the same intensity as before the fall. As before the fall. If it's not natural mm-hmm, for me to be this big, right? Is it again the Navy, right? And being in the Navy and falling from the room I got locked out of, right? That's what's really causing the heart pumps. Yes, yes. Because, <laughs> see, before that, I was normal with everything, even my blood pressure. Right? And yeah, I was about 170 pounds, but everything was normal, right? Even the first year after I was released, right? <laughs> But as I got older, the disability became arthritis in my back and ankle. I don't know what else was wrong, right? I don't even remember discussing it with the doctors in detail if we did. Mm-hmm. Kind of blacked out because of the baby to Tylenol with Cody, which is depressive. Or T3, as they call it. <laughs> So again, I get into a wreck last year. Mm-hmm. I get into a wreck two years before that, and I start filing suits, right? And they're a good point because Kia put me in the six speed, right? And I've only drove, driven this fifth five speed up to then, right? I wasn't sure if I could drive it, but. That's all they offered me to. They didn't offer me an automatic, right? I didn't know if I could drive a six feet or not, right? But I got into an accident because I was going every 10 miles per hour per year, right? Well, that means when I'm 50 to 60, I'm in fifth gear. Mm-hmm. So I bring it down to sixth gear when I'm 60 miles an hour, right? But I look up and my light is red. So I slam on brakes, but the car don't stop, right? Most cars are usually stop. Mm-hmm. So I'm on a dime when you do the brakes that way. Mm-hmm. But there again, it's an automatic. Does it have, I mean, a stick does it have a different type of braking system, right? That could be the factor, right? in there that caused the accident Mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. Because, of course, I'm panicking. I know to hit the brakes and the clutch and try to stop the vehicle. Mm -hmm. And stop the momentum the best I can, but even the best I could still total the car. Mm Mm-hmm. Right. Now, all I can do is tell the story as I remember it happening, right? And tell you I got a bad ankle, right? Which I disclosed to them. That they went to court and lied about it. But all I got to do is use my attorney, my bankruptcy attorney, right? And bring him to court. And he knows, because I tell everyone my story (laughs) that I told them about the bad ankle. (laughs) I don't know. And again, I tell everyone about the bad ankle. I tell everyone my story. (laughs) Why wouldn't you? you? It's a good story. And I thought mm -hmm, the guy's name was Justin and it's something different, but still, but still. Even then, even then. But he's their employee, right? (laughs) 
See, if he lies on the stand, right? And see, most people, they tell you their story, <laughs> right? <laughs> when you're doing the, running the credit, you're running this, you're running that. And that takes time, and people start telling you their story, right? Well, I'll start telling him I'm a disabled veteran, I'm diagnosed with paranoid schizophrenia. I fell three stories from a building, right? <laughs> From the window ledge, because I got locked out in my room, right? You start telling people all that, right? And they lied about it on the stand, right? See, that gives you grounds for an appeal, right? If I have a collaborating witness, right, which would be my bankruptcy lawyer, right? Because, see, I got, I'm telling him certain things, because I got to go through him leaving it in the car, right? And he, too, knows, I tell most people I run into, the story, right? Even he knows the story, right? <laughs> now, I don't know if the judge knew, but the point would be if I, it was for medical purposes, could I get into an automatic as well? Mm -hmm. Which, like I said, I didn't know I could drive a six-speed or not, right? I admit that, too, right? That's pure honesty, right? But when you lie on the stand, that's perjury. <laughs> and that's what the grounds for my appeal would be. You committed perjury. And if I talked to my bankruptcy lawyer, which was Mr. Hill, mm -hmm, of Gaston and Hill, or Jeremy Gaston, or Jeremy Hill, wouldn't have been again, right? Then again, I'm showing I'm trying to be as normal as I can be with or without certain medications too, right? And how I'm trying to function normally in society until these three wrecks happen and my driver records was clean for five years, right? Before the wreck, right? And then... Two years after the wreck, that's when I filed, and uh, within two years, right? And again, other things started happening, like I stopped a car link behind the stop sign after Lisa Road, right? And gunned it, and the officer thought I ran the stop sign, right? Which is, what, 50-50, 50-50, <laughs> Right? Because, see, they allow for at least two cars to be stopped in front of the stop sign, right? Well, that means the officer couldn't see me, right? But I can see him. <laughs> and just went. And just went. <laughs> right? <laughs> Once you saw there was only one car, you went. Right. And even they agreed it was three football fields away. <laughs> There's no danger of hitting him. And no one was coming the other way, right? I looked right, then left, saw the car, and punched it, right? It might have appeared like I just blew through the stop sign. But I had really just stopped the car out of his view and did not know it was a police officer or either. either. So, really, I stopped within viewpoint for me, right? Not the officer. I didn't know it was a police officer. And I also seemed like they changed the police officer. The other guy was different than the guy who did the um, actual trial. Mm -hmm. And I said something about that to him. And then again, the Second wreck happened, and then the following year, the third wreck happened, right? And I'm still slowed down from at least the last two, right? <laughs> mm-hmm. But I did briefly get a little bit better. Mm-hmm. And I think in 2018, I had a little accident in the store. I can't mention it anymore. But again, right. 
That's why you tell them that I got people harassing me on YouTube. I might slip up once in a while, but I'm going to try to keep the name of the store out of it as our agreement. All right. But again, <laughs> I can disclose it in a certain way, but not fully now, right? I can still say the accident happened because I got evidence of the accident. The meat then the meat was not out of place. And then this one I can mention. In the public's parking lot, I had a slip and fall. And even my cousin is a witness to that, all right? At least he knew I slipped and fell. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you saw the whole thing. <laughs> <clears throat> so, again, normally all that can end up in court, right? So, guess who I tried to sue first with the last car? The previous car, right? Not the last one, but the previous one before that. The officer, because... He didn't see the two cars in front of me. And I guess the bus driver just ignored them and tried to plow through a yellow light, whereas I stopped. <laughs> My light was yellow when I stopped in the center lane. <laughs> and I wasn't in her lane yet. <laughs> and if you look at that intersection, you can do that if you're turning left. Now, if you're going straight, you have a narrow margin because going straight, I have a more art in my turn, right? If you look at the road, right? I can almost stop, stop perfectly in the center meridian, right? And not go any further. And she could still go straight if she went straight and didn't have to swerve to avoid the other two cars. But if she swerved to avoid the other two cars, she hit me head on, right? Which is what happened. Because <laughs> I stopped in the center lane. <laughs> See, she's trying to beat the light. I stopped because of the light. <laughs> Being the other. Mm -hmm. And I know that light changes quick when there's no pedestrians crossing, but slowly when there are. Mm -hmm. I also wasn't sure someone wasn't coming and stopped for that reason, right? But again, the officer pled sovereign immunity. Because <laughs> he didn't do it in malice. <laughs> what did you do it in sheer stupidity of my civil rights? That's what the case was brought against you for. It's a civil trial. Mm -hmm. And you can't necessarily use you did it in the performance of your job if that was the day you didn't do your job right. <laughs> That gives me two a grounds for what? Appeal. Appeal. <laughs> you know what an appeal is, right? I mean, it's when the judge makes a bad decision. Yeah. You can appeal his or her decision. And that leaves only one. Judge Roxanne. <laughs> mm-hmm. So again... There could be new judges next year. Mm -hmm. It's an election year. And they're elected too. <laughs> and the thing is, you got to do it like a Judge Judy case. Now, if part of your suit is your ankle, mm -hmm. and you want to show the court your x-rays, <laughs> can the defense lawyer deny you that evidence, no, no. <laughs> why can't he? It's evidence to why your ankle would bother you when you were driving the stick, no. which was the purpose of the suit. <laughs> exactly. So Judge Michael and Judge Barry, right, messed up because the problem was, and I addressed this in the suit, the officer was not even at the scene when the accident happened, right? He didn't show up till later on. Now, when the accident happened, it was still dark <laughs> as well. Mm -hmm. It was dark. There were two cars in front of me, right? And I have vision problems in my right eye, not my left. Huh? Your left. 
Well, I'm still making a left-hand turn, though. Which eye has the dominant side if you're making a left-hand turn? Your left eye. Your left eye. So there was still... Oh, no. I was telling him certain things, but he wasn't listening. Now, I'm not saying it wasn't because he was more concerned with the bus driver and the school children. But he turned it on me. He got mad with me. Maybe that's when it turned from doing his job to malice. See, malice stuff uh, is like when a doctor's operating on you right? and he's drinking on the job. <laughs> now, I ain't saying the officer was drinking on the job, but I am saying he got mad mm -hmm, about the accident involving the bus driver and her school children. So mad he didn't take down my statement at all. Mm -hmm. Though I told it to both the insurance companies, all state and no, state farm, right? And I told him, man, <laughs> keep the records. <laughs> See, they got to do that too, or become an in, also an insurance scheme, right? You're billing the wrong people, huh? No. You're supposed to build the bus driver in her company, right? Not me, not you. <laughs> and since the support went with the police station that messed up the accident report, the city can be sued, right? The city, the police department, right? Yeah, yeah. Now, malice, though, can happen what? When... After you start trying to explain to the officer and he no longer listens to your side of the argument, right? Because, see, I don't know what the bus driver is saying to him, right? And, see, that's why I'm trying to take it to court to find out. Mm -hmm. But this might be a superior court type situation, right? I might can get more than 15, right? But again, I know. I'm a reasonable guy. I wouldn't want more than 2 million, right? <laughs> and that's because I know there's other people who have, again, similar situations developed and you don't want to, you know, get too much or too little, just enough, right? To make it through the rest of your life, right? And I still can work part time, by the way, right? Not full time, not full time. With my arthritis, ankle, and pelvis, right? Having arthritis in the. No, no. Well, within a few hours, not even four, I'm up to level 10 pain and have to lay down for two hours before I can go again. I do that every day, right? Or you can't work a normal job. Unless you do what's called a split shift, where you do three in the morning and three at night. <laughs> and they're willing to pay you enough to survive. I know, not just enough to live. Because, <laughs> you know, I'm also used to being a disabled veteran, too, and not having to worry about it. And sometimes I have to lay down again around six. And, uh, 5.30, well, yeah, 5.30 to six sometimes, right? For about an hour. So that's Three hours of laying down, right? During the day. Mm -hmm. You can't work a normal job that way. I oh, know. So if I go to noon and I lay down to two and then I get up around two to six, that's still four hours, right? Mm-hmm. Or five to six, right? Somewhere in there, right? That's three to five hours, and then I lay down to seven or five thirty to six thirty somewhere in there, right? Because each day is different too. I might try to make it a little bit past noon, right? But I still might have to lay down over an hour and a half to two hours, right? Every day, every day with minimal pressure or doing minimal things now. I have built up to walking 30 minutes four times a day, right? And still doing my karate a little bit every other day. Mm -hmm. 
and lifting weights up to 120 pounds. That's all I got. But I'm bench pressing 255, right? Which ain't a bad weight. You know, that's over. <laughs> Close to my body weight, which is 327, right? So, again, mm -hmm. and I keep telling you, right? If you don't have a spotter like Ed had, Edster, whatever's going on there, right? See, Ed had a spotter for 400 pounds. And believe it or not, if someone's doing a competition, even if there's no one right behind them, mm -hmm. there's someone right behind them, right, in case they can't do the weight. Because, mm -hmm. see, it's different when you bridge press, all right? Because, see, you're going to have all that weight coming down on your chest, right? Now, you can probably deadlift more, right, per man, per man. That's why the Shaolin have to deadlift 500 pounds before they can leave the temple. After passing the test, right? Of the dummies through the maze, right? See, that's why the Wing Chun uses dummies to, to like the Shaolin, right now. Except theirs is outside the temple. Mm hmm. Though, unlike the Shaolin dummy, each dummy is set with a certain attack, right? Which they train you how to defend while you're in the monastery, right? And you train where you sleep, too, right? Now, Mr. Miyagi and Daniel son, Daniel went to Mr. Miyagi's house to be trained in karate, right? <laughs> Though, typical Japanese do have a separate dojo from their house, right? But again, it depends on your style. Mm-hmm. Now, like in the Kung Fu movies, they also have a dojo. Though some people do live in the dojo. Mm -hmm. If you remember that too in the movies, I know. Mm -hmm. Whatever you want to call it, right? I forgot what the Chinese called their, uh, you know, it was the Shaolin Temple or the... Um, Martial arts hall, right? I forgot the exact word, right? For, uh, mm hmm. It's not dojo, that's Japanese, that's Japanese, right? And I'm not sure what the Korean word for it is, but I probably got it in the book somewhere. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Though Sifu is master in Chinese and, uh, I forgot what it is in Korean, but uh, Sensei is black belt. Mm -hmm. Shidoshi is a 10th degree or black belt. Mm -hmm. Anyway, so, y'all have a good morning.